welcome to an interview episode brought to you by the Arts Management and Technology Lab. My name is Victoria Sprouls, the podcast producer. In today's episode, I will be talking with my guests about the future place of technology in the administration and creation of art museums. Joining me today is Dr. Hung Wu, who received her PhD in museum studies from the University of Bergen in Norway, after which she was the deputy director of the Cultural Exchange Center for the Nanjing Museum and is now the curator of Asian art at the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria. I'm also joined today by Nick Pozak, assistant director at the Parker School of Foreign and Comparative Law at Columbia University, where he conceptualizes and organizes conferences, symposia, lecture series, and research projects about geopolitics, international law, and globalization. Nick has also held leadership roles at the League of American Orchestras, Asia Society, and Carnegie Museum of Art. So my first question today might be a little bit more for you, Hung. Um, I'm wondering what was the biggest challenge working from home in a field that in some ways is all about the physical location, you know, the museum itself? Uh huh. Actually, I should say there hasn't been so challenging for me, like uh, as expected. In the beginning of the working from home, I was kind of concerned like how how can how should I like uh, continue my research on my curatorial work but then right. thanks to the technology like I am I have no problem to get uh, remotely connected to our database and also um, I got many um, benefits from working from home because I, my schedule is flexible so I can work like when I feel best like in the, the working mood so yeah <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but what I uh, what I miss most is to see the audience in our physical space and to see how they are responding to our shows and the collections. That's the part I miss most. Yeah, and then kind of responding to that feedback, like in in live time, as opposed right. to just over over technology, over Zoom or email. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this past summer, we did a podcast all about virtual museum visits offered in different museums around the world. Do you think this kind of online museum experience is here to stay, or do you think it was just a temporary fix in the age of stay-at-home mandates? And I guess if, if either of you have an opinion about this. So for a lot of art fairs launched these kind of virtual fairs um, and these experiences that were supposed to simulate the experience of going to an art fair and being in and surrounded by the, you know, the arts community. And there was an immediate backlash and kind of disenchantment with them. Um, a lot of folks said, you know, these, this isn't a virtual fair, this is a website. Um, and so the virtual experience, it's great. It's wonderful for researchers. It does a lot to offer um, a kind of symbolic experience of art, but it does very little to actually experience the works in person or have the experience of really going through an exhibition and really understanding you know, things like the sight lines or the kind of cerebral connections that happen by being just, just around and looking closely at the work, looking closely at kind of the brush strokes and the material qualities of the work and the kind of the visceral experience of it. Like that just, that just isn't there with the virtual experience. And there are things that virtual does very well. Um, and I certainly think it's here to stay, but it's certainly not going to be something that supplants the fiscal visit. Right. It's interesting you brought that up. Last week we did um, a podcast about like the potential of the metaverse, which would be more of like a, a VR experience instead of a website, you know, a 2D website. But it's true what you say about the brush strokes in person. Like you can't really replicate that as, as hard as you as you might want to try. Yeah, if you look at images of VR, of people actually experiencing VR, what you often see are like folks wearing these kind of like big goofy goggles. They may have paddles in either hand. It's an incredibly isolating experience. Um, it's an experience that's not about connection to other humans or about connection to the world. And that's the other thing that museum museums offer, right? It's not just a physical place where you come and look at art. It's a place, it's a forum where you interact with others and you experience art as a community and you engage in dialogue and conversation. That's why museums are really great at tackling really difficult topics, um, things that are controversial or complex, 
because there are these sort of multifaceted community spaces. Yeah, I saw you nodding your head, Hung. Did you have Did you have anything to add about about curation and community? Yeah, I, um, I totally agree with Nick on this regard, and I, I think we are exactly on the, on um, on the same page because I like personally as a. Uh, person who do who has a museum studies as my background and have have been in this field for many years, I really believe in the should I say the material nature of museum and museum collections. So um, yeah, I mean like uh, Nick has, has mentioned uh, the museum is not only a place for collections and also for people to to gather to have this social interactions to like a forum. So yeah, totally, I don't think this online um, virtual things can uh, replace, like it can substitute the museum experience. But on the mean, at the meantime, I also uh, think like an um, online experience has also brought some new benefits to, to the museums. Because like, for example, uh, we do have some new audience, right? It's these audience who, might have no time or no uh, facilities to come to the museum. Now they can get this more or less same experience online. Like they can still engage with the, um, the collections or the shows. So yeah, I think uh, we have uh, some new audience and also uh, museums now are more open for their resources to be shared with uh, a broad audience. And uh, yeah, I think this is also one of the benefit, benefits that uh, uh, online experience can bring to us. Another thing I would think is um, uh, it also get, uh, reduce or remove the distance, physical distance. Like it's now it's totally like globally connected community. Like a, a person, for example, in Shanghai can easily get access to the gallery in Milan, for example. So yeah, I mean like uh, technology has, has brought us uh, many new benefits, but still, I agree with Nick. Nothing can, nothing can replace the uh, physical. Yeah, what I'm what I'm hearing is kind of it does allow for a sense of community in the sense that you can now see other people's work in different countries. But it's still kind of if you're viewing it online or even yeah. in VR, it's it's more of an isolating yeah. experience than like a communal viewing of art. And Hung, I know that the Art Gallery of Victoria, you currently have an exhibit called Retainers of Anarchy, which is a 25 meter scroll like video installation that references life during the Song Dynasty and more recent digitizations of historical scrolls. How do you see immersive exhibits as the next wave in museum curation? Yeah, this show is uh, by uh, the artist called uh, Howie Chu. And uh, um, I wasn't involved in this program because I just joined the gallery uh, last year. So this was a program which has been um, um, worked on previously uh, by our former chief curator, Michelle Jacobs. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the visual uh, visual result is quite uh, uh, powerful. Like I can see the visitors were really enjoying it. Uh, but, but again, I mean, <laughs> this immersive, immersive experience uh, in my personal view, I think only can be something which may, it, it, it can like enhance in a way the museum visiting experience, but it, it cannot really replace the conventional vis uh, museum visiting experience. Do you see it more as maybe a way to get people that might not have been as willing to go to a museum before in the door, and then once they're in the door, they're I mean, they... uh, We have to understand our audience is so diverse. Like some people really love it, but some people hate it. <laughs> right. So yeah, I mean, uh, what museums could offer is to offer uh, different, like a uh, diversified opportunities for audience to have uh, their own choice to like to which shows to see and which experience they want to get, gain. So I I believe museum can have this um, um, now and then can have some immersive ex like a virtual experience, but still we do need uh, the other that or say traditional forms of uh, museum experience. 
You know, I think one of the things that's most interesting for me is when artists actually just use these technologies to create immersive experiences. And then it becomes an extra kind of layer on top of an exhibition. And that's, I think that's in a way more meaningful. Um, and often artists will create works that are digital, that are in dialogue with a collection. Um, I think also of, um, and this is a bit dated now, but uh, 2017, Jordan Wilson had a piece in the Whitney Biennial, which was this uh, VR headset piece um, where, I don't, I don't know if you've seen it, but um, when you put on the headset, you're kind of immediately mentally locked into like the VR environment. And what you see in front of you is this like gruesome attack. Uh, Wilson actually like portrays an assailant um, just assaulting a person and you have the option as the viewer to either watch this which is it was really really hard to watch it was just like uh, um unbearable and, and kind of impossible to stomach or turning away and creating the spirit of being kind of complicit in it or just ignoring this assault and it created this really interesting kind of personal dilemma and that, I mean, that was a marvelous use of the technology. Um, and that was a wonderful insertion into an exhibition that I think has a very important place in museums. Right. So maybe it, it's more powerful when it's used by artists uh, on purpose than it is by curators. And I'm about to, to bring up something that I know is extremely controversial in the in the museum field. But how do you both personally feel or what are you sensing in the industry about the impact of edutainment events like the immersive Van Gogh exhibits that are currently traveling across the U.S.? Um, it seems like it seems like they do compete with with museums in a certain way. And, and what do you think this how how do you how are you feeling about it and what do you think this means for museums in the future and do you think it competes with museums or do you think it's a completely different experience uh, i don't feel it's a compete like a compete i um it's totally different this uh, experience yes for sure like, uh, for me i <laughs> previously <laughs> said like uh, i'm i'm not in favor of this but i i do understand this, like uh, some people would be crazy about this, especially um, um, for people like who have, haven't got any chance to really see Van Gogh's uh, original work right. works. Yeah, but as um, like uh, as I said, like I'm a museum person, like uh, through and through, <laughs> yeah. The conventional museum way. I really, really hope uh, um, uh, our audience could uh, use any chance to come to the gallery like to the actual space to see the works uh, in person. Yeah, instead yeah. of more of a kind of entertainmentified version. Yeah, I think in, in some way, this kind of experience will also alter a little bit of the, of the real um, sense or meaning of the original works. So I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit right. uh, it concerned. It's kind of what you were saying, Nick, about how, you know, Van Gogh was alive a long time ago and, and has no has no sway over how his art is being used in, in this way. And so we can't be sure that this would have been his intent or that he would have approved of this, you know, um, kind of entertainment defying of his artwork. Yeah. Looking specifically to Van Gogh and his legacy, right, he was completely underappreciated in his time. I wonder if his experience of going to this, you know, uh, the immersive Van Gogh exhibition, he would just be floored and be like, wow, my work has really made it. Yeah. It's Maybe hard he'd be to happy. Say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm with Hung insofar as I'm kind of neutral on these experiences. I don't think that they're wholly a bad thing. I, you know, it's the same way like a screensaver or a mouse pad or a coffee mug or a calendar. We don't, we don't say, oh, well, you know, if somebody's going to buy the Van Gogh calendar, they're not going to come to a museum. They're actually probably more likely to come to a museum. To the right. um, so I think that exposure is a good thing. I think more art is generally better. Is it the best possible experience of art? Probably not. But any art is good art. Right. 
Yeah. And then my last question for both of you is, what was the greatest challenge for museums during the pandemic? What was the greatest challenge for you personally? And how did you work to kind of combat these challenges? I know, Nick, you don't work directly with museums, but you might still have a have a opinion on this. Well, we saw with museums closing, right, when they can't physically allow visitors into the building, it suddenly changes their entire operational model. It meant that exhibitions weren't going up. It meant that tickets weren't being taken. And so admissions desks closed, um, art installers were furloughed. I think that exposed a really complicated and problematic hierarchy within cultural institutions and exasperated some of the dilemmas that museums were already experiencing. Um, right in 2019, I think it was Vulture published an article about uh, or, or kind of tongue in cheek ranking of museums boards, identifying the most toxic of them, um, seeing that museums had already created these problematic cultures that were now becoming more evident in the public imagination and becoming um, something that museums would need to tackle moving forward or need to address head on moving forward. And these aren't a cer these certainly aren't new, right? We look at the Art Workers Coalition in the 1960s and the 70s, which demanded representation of um, women and people of color, both in the galleries and on museums boards, and actually also demanded the representation of artists on museum boards. So there is a kind of inequality that the museum hierarchy presents. And I think that, you know, that when you have an entire rung of the museum infrastructure looking for employment elsewhere because they simply can't go to work because the museum isn't paying them, that, cre that creates a lot of tension and a lot of problems. And it begs a lot of questions about what, who these museums serve um, and how museums treat people that have dedicated their lives and their careers to their service. And for you, Hung, what has been the, the biggest challenge uh, for you and for your museum in the pandemic? Okay, so for, for my museum, like uh, the challenges for the museums in general, uh, I think Nick has uh, talked uh, a lot about. And uh, specifically for our museum, I think we, ha we have been trying to be open as possible as we could. So we were closed only like about three months. Yes. Then we, we were open until now. And we have been also making many efforts to, to um, substitute the, the experience that the uh, audience have been uh, missing through technology, for example. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, in terms of me personally, uh, I think uh, the challenge is uh, I've been always thinking about during this um, uh, COVID time, like uh, as a curate, how to uh, make efforts to, like uh, in the curatorial side, to, to send a message to our audience, to still connect our audience. So I have been, for example, uh, right after COVID, uh, we, quickly put on an exhibition and it's called uh, Collecting and uh, Connecting. And it's about our new acquisitions, but, but it just, uh, I think the message I was trying to deliver is um, we are still connected. Like even the door was opened, but uh, we are still connected. Like when the door is uh, reop reopened, like um, you are all welcome back and uh, yeah. Trying, trying to keep the community even if it's still That's COVID right. times, the right? Community, like, uh, still connected. And another, then I also made another exhibition, which is still on at our galleries. It's called a uh, um, global, global local. Okay. It's, uh, I like this it. Is exhibition about, yeah, it's about, it's totally using our own collections. It's um, about the blue and white porcelains, but uh, um, in a, like a global perspective, uh, I use this exhibition to explore the uh, rela should I say, rela relationship between local and the global because because of, like we are all so limited to our like to tied to our local 
space like we can travel but uh, with um, uh, like a technology with internet we are still globally connected so yeah this is like um, something i'm trying to do use curatorial approach to uh to uh, uh, connect our audience and to send the messages to invite them to think about uh, in this challenging time think about like to consider to, to reflect on yeah anyway that's you know i do actually have one quick remark and that's just beyond technology something that i think museums have done exceptionally well has been leveraging their facades to communicate uh, and to show their collections. Uh, the Jewish Museum um, and the Queens Museum here in New York have, you know, when their doors were closed, used the fronts of the buildings to really present art. And that's a, a tremendous and powerful way of connecting with the community um, in a very real way. Right. So even if the doors are closed, you know, we're still here. We're still showcasing art for you. We want to be a part of the community kind of kind of a thing. Yeah. Right. And you don't need to come to our website. Yes. <laughs> in person. In person, even if not in the building. Yeah. All right. Thank you both so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Amped Lab podcast. And don't forget to subscribe wherever podcasts are found. Let us know what you thought by visiting our website, amp-lab.org. That's amt-lab.org. Or you can email us at ampedlabcmu at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Tech in the Arts or on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Arts Management and Technology Lab. Tune in next time for our Let's Talk series. Thanks again for listening. If you found this episode informative, educational, or inspirational, then send this to another arts aficionado in your life. We'll see you next time.